NASCAR Winston Cup Series on Fox, presented by UPS, is brought to you by Singular Wireless. Never pay long distance or roaming again. It's a singular nation. 50 laps and already three caution flags. Lap four, Buckshot Jones into the wall off of Steve Park. Lap 41, in the back stretch, Stacy Compton. And lap 52, John Andretti. So it, do the math, you're the mathematician. Every three, every 50 laps, we're gonna have three cautions. How many will that be? 30, just like you asked for. <laughs> there you go. Kurt Busch? No, that's the 29 car. Oh, Kevin Harvick, Harvick. Yeah. excuse me. Dick Bergeron. I'm with Stacey Compton. He's had a tough weekend so far. Crashed yesterday in the Bush race. Now behind the wall. How bad is this race car? Well, it's pretty bad right now. Uh, paid for these guys with Conseco Pontiac. We're running good. Uh, just got under a car out there and we touched a little bit getting up off the corner. And it's Bristol. Um, I hate it for these guys. I'll tell you what, this team is about to turn a corner. Uh, we just can't find any luck right now. Hopefully we'll get some luck going our way. And uh, we'll be back next week. Okay, they're beating on it to Steve Burns. Well, Dick Michael Waltrip's having a lot of problems here early in the race. He's been on pit road no less than four times. They adjusted the toe out, and Michael Waltrip was afraid that they adjusted it the wrong way. So they've had to come back in, take a look at it, and they're expecting him to hit pit road again. And yeah, we got the 12 car on pit road here, uh, Larry. He's taking on, uh, looks like he thinks, oh, he must have some damage to the... Uh, Left rear there. Like the left there. rear tire yeah. was rubbing the quarter panel. He was actually one of the cars that pitted on lap 45, Dick Bergen. Yeah, that's the problem, all right. Uh, the 12 car, Ryan Newman, has had contact with another driver. He had a flat tire, so this is the second pit stop he has made to try and repair the damage to that automobile. All right, we're getting set for the restart. They want us to crank it up, and we shall. We're going to crank it up, baby. this car yesterday in practice. He by far had the best race car. That car was digging down there at the bottom of the racetrack. I think the question was, can Tony go 500 laps here today? If he doesn't give out physically, his car is there for him. But you know what makes him feel a lot better? Is that race car is a good race car. Oh, yeah. Like Leaders. Said. Jeff Gordon was all the way underneath Jimmy Spencer down the front stretch. Here he goes again. Whoa, Spence. Now, Spence, you'd get mad if he did that to you. Clear, clear low. Give him some room, bud. He's faster than you are. 150,000 seats and nobody is sitting in them. Everybody's on their feet watching this. Go, Gordon Steve. gave him a boot. Uh, I had, had, to give him a, had to let him know that he meant business. Right now, Jimmy's up in that second groove and just no grip up there right now. He just can't get a bite. Gordon's like a surge, you know. He knows exactly. Just give me that little bump. Just enough to get you out of the way. Matt Kenseth in the 17. He's going to work on Spencer here. Spencer needs to get back down the bottom of the racetrack. And you know what I think about that 17 car, Larry? The way he ran at Rockingham, this is a kind of a similar racetrack. You know, that's a mile, I know, but they've got a lot of characteristics the same running good here today. Yes, a lot of teams are using their Rockingham car here. How about that four car? That testing that he did up here is paying off for him, isn't it, Matt? It sure is, D.W., having the best run of the season for Mike Skinner. But the team's heart sank under that caution when Mike came out and said, guys, I think I've got a right front tire going down. So he pulled up alongside Matt Kenton, who's running in third. And Matt, look at it. Matt gave the thumbs up so the tire's okay. And what happened when you've got the hot tires and you go to, to caution? We talked about it earlier. You pick up that rubber, and it will make you feel like you have a 
a flat tire on a restart, you have to do a good job of getting those tires cleaned off. That's why the crew chiefs are always hauling at the drivers. Clean them up now, clean them up, because you always got buildup on them after a caution. Tony Stewart in sixth. He has Ward Burton, lap car in front of him as he moves toward the front. Dick? And as you heard earlier in our broadcast, Tony Stewart has every intention of finishing this race, but he is a badly beaten up race car driver. They're keeping it very low key, but Todd Bodine is in the area, and he will be ready to get in that car if needed. He is not in the pit area, but he's on the property, and he is a designated driver. We look at our Fox tracks. He is making some gains on that leader right now, Jeff Gordon. Just a real neat story about this race car. This is the car that he won with here in August. They have changed Victor lane completely moved it when they were testing up here they were tearing the old victory lane down the team said hey you know our car was the last car in that old victory lane they went over and gathered up a bunch of pieces though <laughs> the lane and took it back to the shop well i tell you one thing they'll have to do they may have to pull tony stewart out of that car after this race is over with and i don't believe he's going to get out of that hot rod though bobby hamilton works around michael waltrip jimmy johnson comes along with him and steve park ryan newman and, and Larry, you know this, of all the injuries I ever had in racing, when I was in my race car, I was the most comfortable, believe it or not. Because I was in my I was in my little domain, my own little world there, and I focused on racing, and I never thought about how much pain I was in. But when you climbed out of that race car, you know how many aches and pains you had? Call the ambulance. <laughs> Newman, Kyle Petty, Rick Bast, and then the leader, Jeff Gordon. Steve? Mike, just a quick follow-up on Michael Waltrip. I mentioned he was on pit road four times. On one of those efforts, Kyle Petty got into him. And there's a lot of damage to the left front corner of that 15 car. In fact, his crew has already gone back into the garage to the crash cart. They may have to bring Michael Waltrip in. Well, something so simple as a little bit of a toe, uh, get the toe in knocked out. We're going to talk about an eighth of an inch, but you can't drive it if it's not there. And look right here, earlier, this is how Spencer took the lead from Gordon when Gordon started ca catching the lap cars, and he's right on his rear bumper again. Well, you know why? Because Jeff Gordon is real cautious. And Jimmy Spencer, does he know what that word means? <laughs> let's just say Gordon has the lap traffic a little more delicately. Delicately. There you now, go. let's look back to yesterday's Bush race. Spencer did not have a mark on his car until the last lap. <laughs> well, he was determined to get one on it and did and he didn't want to finish the day without a mark on his car last corner of the last lap they work under rick mast and, and again as, as we got to 76 laps on tires now some of that good grip and that good handling feeling that you had is going to go away uh, over the next several laps how about it matt well, Mike, you know how spotters are so important, especially here at Bristol. Under that caution, Jeff Gordon came out and told his spotter, Ron Thiel, it's very important that you keep me on the bottom. He says, I've tried the outside, and it's just not there yet. You need to keep me on the bottom. This place, uh, this place looks like a twice as large version of Thiel's home track, Riverhead, Long Island. So you're pretty familiar with the contours of this place. But look, you're never out of traffic. Jeff Gordon gets a few laps here in the clear, and then he's right back up in traffic again, and that's the way it is all day long. It's like getting in a big crowd of people. And as, you know, you get pushed around a little bit, you say, excuse me, and you get pushed around a little bit, excuse me. Pretty soon you say, somebody push me again, I'm gonna knock the car out of it. 500 laps in a blender. But I tell you, the fastest car on the racetrack, Tony Stewart, and that 20 car started 13th. He's up to the fifth position right now. And here we're gonna look at the Fox tracks. A while ago, it was about two and a half, two and three quarter seconds. Oh, right trouble over on the back. Steve, Steve Park, Park is spun. And uh, <clears throat> caution, caution is out. Lap 81, fourth caution of the day. All right, DW, 80 laps. I believe I'm going to give you four tires now. But we have a group of cars that pitted about 35 laps ago. I have a feeling that group may stay out. Well, let me ask you something. Uh, could you open up those air ducts that I told you to tape up last night? As long as it don't cost my pit stop. I'm not going to give up no positions in these pits. You want to be comfortable, you have to sit in that lazy boy and watch the race on Fox. <laughs> In other words, quit working your mouth and start working your hands. Is that there what you're you trying go. to say? Now let's see what happens to Steve Park in turn two. Got down on the flat. Too low on the racetrack. There's such a transition right there between that asphalt and concrete. I'd have to back that up a little bit further, boys, if you could, because he didn't just get down there. There you go. He was already he was yeah. already loose when he got there. He got under Bobby. Same thing we saw happen to the 14 car. He got down there and didn't have anywhere to go, and he had to cut it hard, and he spun out. Leaders are on pit road, 30 yeah. miles an hour. 
All right, they have to enter on turn two, 30 miles an hour, all the way down the backstretch pits. Pit road is a continuation through three and four. There's no teams pitting there, no wall, but it's a continuation. You still have to maintain 30 miles an hour. See, they entered right here. This is still part of pit road right here, 30 miles an hour. A lot of those guys are pitting right here on the front stretch. So pit road goes from turn two to turn one. Tried to even it up and not be a disadvantage pitting on the back stretch. Now, the, uh, several cars went in the back straightaway pit. The 48 car, here comes Terry Labonte. He was the first one in his pit box. He's off, of back of, he's off the back pit lane now. See where he comes out, Steve. ADW Sterling Marlin said he's still just a little bit loose off. They want to make a wedge adjustment. Four tires for Sterling Marlin's Dodge. Dick Berger. Tony Stewart is tight in the center of the corners. He's asked for more forward bite, even though that might make the tight in the center worse. He said he's going to fix it the way he drives the car. Come that. And Jeff Lord is already down and away, beating Spencer off. They made a slight air pressure just in the right rear. He was very pleased with the way the car cut in the center of the corner. He just needed some help up off the corner. One member of Casey Atwood's crew limped back across the wall. He was bumped hard by Sterling Marlin as Sterling exited his pit. Eighty six laps complete in the Food City 500. We're working the fourth caution of the day for Steve Park's spin at turn two. Now the five leaders did not pit under this caution. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jeff Burton, Dale Jarrett, Mark Martin. Now here are the fellows who did pit and where they came out. The real loser there was Mike Skinner, came in fourth, went out 21st, but I talked to a lot of the crew chiefs this morning, especially guys that qualified bad and was on the backstretch pits, would include Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Burton, Dale Jarrett, Mark Martin, and Joe Nemechek. They said they were gonna have to make a move in the race to try to get track position. They were all on pit road at lap 45, about 30 laps on their tires. That's no kind of laps on their tires. Mm. And there they are right there. See, top five right there now. Look where they looked before the pits where they were running on the racetrack. Got that track position. That could, that could pay off later on. They're out of sequence. That's what I like. The pace car is coming not in. that good. That's a good move sometimes. Getting set for the restart. Green flag to begin lap 89. Oh, Warren Burton gets into his teammate there. That's Strickland. Both those cars are trying to get a lap back right now. Jeff Burton in the 99 Hello, took the lead from Dale Earnhardt Jr. while this was going on. This is a telemetry on Dale Earnhardt Jr. right there. You see about 8,800. Into the straightaway, about 6,800, feathered a little bit right there. Up to about 8,900 right there. The end of the front stretch, down there, about 6,500. Clear, clear. Whoa, Mark Martin up to the fence as he got boxed out in traffic and lost about seven positions. It's tagged by Johnny Benson right there. He was on the outside, blocked behind Hermie Sadler. And when he got down to the lane, he got nerfed again, and they were three abreast. And that cost Mark, who makes his 500 Winston Cup start today, cost him dearly. It's a bump from Tony, and they're three abreast there. Of course, Tony has those fresh tires. Mark Martin on 35 lap tires. Yeah, that's that'll cause your car to be a little bit better right that, there. That's such a dang. I mean, I know track position is important, but boy, when you lose grip and the guy behind you's got four fresh ones, he's going to use you up. And that's the thing. They don't see the give up on the stopwatch with older tires. It's just the grip it has. Can't maneuver the car around. That's what happens. Jeff Burton, the leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Dale Jarrett, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy outside, Spencer, outside, and Tony Stewart, Joe Nemechek, and this man, Rusty Wallace, the winningest active driver here with nine wins, Dick Bergman. Rusty had a real good pit stop. They time it a little differently than we do. Their timing is a little quicker. They have it at 14.7. They loosened the car up a little bit. He came out of the pits in 10th spot. He started the race in 9th spot, and right now he's running in 7th. Come that. Dick, Jimmy Spencer came out of the pit second, right behind Jeff Gordon, currently rides in the fifth position. Jimmy said his number 41 car started out on the tight side, but as the run progressed, the car worked itself to neutral, and it stayed there. They took one pound out of both rear tires, just trying to get some forward bite up off the corner to Steve Burns.
Well, it's such a compromise here, Darrell. Where you really have to have your race car good is right in the middle of the corner. Have that car turn. But sometimes to do that, Jeff, what you actually do, you hurt the exit of the corner. The rear wheels won't hook up to the racetrack on acceleration, and that's called lack of forward bite. Larry, you're exactly right. And one other thing we want to keep going back to is all weekend it's been really cool at this racetrack and we got a whole lot more a warmer temperature today and you know yourself it may not be exactly what we talk about as far as concrete temperature being affected but that rubber that gets on top of that concrete still gets warm under sunlight and therefore the racetrack gets greasy when it gets like that yeah what'll happen you know you'll you'll your driver tell you well i'm tight in the center a little loose off you'll fix you'll fix the tight in the center have it turn and they'll say but you got me looser off because you've made it turn better yeah what the, the track is so i mean it's got little ridges in it it's concrete and the tires try to they just can't hook up once they get the air pressure built up in them they just want to spin they get bumped loose bop, 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 bop. and i talked to mike skinner last night he said larry i finally realize on into a run you can't just nail the throttle you, you have, have to put it halfway down car feels like it hooks up you go ahead and go down we got a battle for second place here jeff gordon goes by dale earnhardt jr so you got to pull a real low gear here in the race it's again i call it passing gear you qualify with a i don't know what larry a five five fourteen five fourteen five you race a five forty three 543 you're going to turn the motor out of the frame but you got to have it to get by cars and that makes it hard to drive some guys can handle it some guys can't but it's that type of rpms that's really not that hard oh yeah it just goes up there for a split second as we saw in the telemetry while ago it, it's not about the motor it's about getting up off of these corners and getting down these little straightaways in a hurry to watch Dale Jarrett let's show you what happened back on caution flag pit stops as Sterling Marlin was exiting his pit he clipped Drew Blickensturfer, the right side tire changer on Casey Atwood, upends him right there. But he did not leave the pit and he's okay, Steve. Yeah, Mike, they're gonna take Drew Blickensturfer to the infield care center just to look at him. They think it's a superficial injury, a, uh, a big abrasion on his right ankle. They changed two tires on that car and they think he's all right. Just checking him out. Thanks, Steve. We need to add that Brett Bodine, 11 car, was behind the wall for several laps for repairs. He's back on the racetrack. Has that new sponsor out there, Hooters Restaurants. For the rest of the season. Yep. 107 laps. Oh, we've done the last 35 or so. Caution free here in Thunder Valley. Jeff Burton leads them at Bristol. NASCAR Winston Cup Series on Fox, presented by UPS, is brought to you by Team Monte Carlo. The cars more champions depend on. Chevy will be there. And by Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse. Lowe's Improving Home Improvement. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing on Fox, presented by UPS. We are under caution for the fifth time today. Hermie Sadler has crashed up in turn number three, and after he spun to a stop, Dale Jarrett did not have room to get through, bended up the nose. Yeah, I don't think he, he didn't hurt it much. I thought he might hurt it, but uh, it, look, it looks like it's all right as he went by here. Tor, you've knocked the left front fender in. That's probably a lot of the problem. Oh, he wrecks all the way down that back straightaway. Got a little bit of help from Bobby Hamilton, 55 car, up the racetrack. And Darrell, I think we'll see here, I think Dale Jarrett anticipated he was going to slide down the racetrack, Ooh, and he yeah. did. Yeah, he got more damage than I thought from Sadler's on board. There he gets turned. He's working with it. He's trying. Hold the brake. Hold the brake. Hold the brake. Hold the brake. It's all right. Hold the brake. Hey, right, roll down a little bit and let the 88. From Dale Jarrett. Yeah, he's got to spin up and... Couldn't get stopped. I think he again he anticipated that car, which normally will happen, was going to roll down the racetrack. But the spotters tell him to hold the brake because all the traffic was going low. They were just happen to be forced up high. I'm sure. If he'd been off the brake, the banking would have been self-cleaning. Yeah. He said earlier, but now Hermie Sadler is driving that autism awareness car. His young daughter diagnosed with autism last February, and Hermie working with the Autism Society of America to increase awareness and raise funds to help find a cure. In addition, there's this educational videotape for teachers who work with children with autism and special needs. For more information, call the number on your screen or visit their website. Well, now, Larry, I want to tell you something. I was just about ready to call you and say, you know, next time don't leave me out here on 30-lap tires. 
Yeah, I mean, the only person that was paying off for was Jeff Burton, Frankie Stoddard, and that group in the 99 car. You know, he still was holding on to second place, but this is did what, didn't what they wanted to see right here because now you're forced. You have to come in and pit. Yeah, and the thing, the thing about it is, is if it stays green for a long period of time, those other guys are going to eat my lunch. Going back Absolutely. in or stay out? You're okay. Stay out. Dale Jarrett with minor damage back on track. 119 laps completed, five cautions already. NASCAR Winston Cup Series presented by UPS is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Napa, we keep America running. By Kawasaki, get 000 till 2003 on all Kawasaki vehicles. Kawasaki, let the good times roll. By Coca-Cola, official soft drink of NASCAR. And by Autotrader.com, new, used, buying or selling. It's the ultimate in automotive classifieds. Need more NASCAR? Mondays at 7 Eastern, 9 Pacific on Speed Channel. NASCAR Inside Winston Cup. The guys who live it every weekend. Michael Walter, Johnny Benson, Kenny Schrader, plus host Alan Bestwick. Inside Winston Cup on Speed. To get Speed Channel, call 888-22-SPEED. Let's have a look at the NASCAR Bush Series standings, the way they stack up after yesterday's slugfest here at Bristol. Greg Biffle is the point leader. Jeff Green, Kent Wallace, Jack Sprague, and Jason Keller. And the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series points, sponsored by Sears. Ted Musgrave and Robert Presley tied for the lead after two races. They better look out. Uh, let me tell you, here's something that Larry and I were talking about. These guys that pitted the last time are now leading the race. The guys that didn't are now back in the field. But they're all sequenced, Larry, and I like that sometimes. It, it can definitely put some different strategies, especially when we get near the end of the race. And I believe we're going back green flag racing here. Pace car is off. Long way to go still. Oh, yeah, we just we just got the water warm. Fifth caution period over. And we begin at lap 124. Stewart just keeps inching closer to the front. Boy, Tony Stewart's car is so good. Just past the center, he's able to put that throttle down even on older tires and stay in it. Makes it look like he's got 50 more horsepower down the straightaways. But you know what? I, there's a, I tell you why. I believe he's pulling a 529 gear. It's a friendly gear to drive because you can map the throttle and it won't try to bust the tires loose. It won't, right, it won't spin the rear tires. But Tony got to be patient with those lap cars there. The 23 of Hutt Strickland. Long way to go, buddy. He doesn't want to lose contact with that leader anymore. He wants to keep him in sight. And he won't. That's the end of the lap car, but for Brett Bodine, who Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Spencer just dispatched. See who's quick here. Gordon, then Marlon, then Wallace. Gordon, your leader. There's Spencer. There's Stewart. Then Wallace, Kenseth, and Johnny Benson. Yeah, right now, right. Johnny Benson's caught here. Listening in just a little bit there, but it, boy, he has made some gains. Started in 28th. Johnny and this group hadn't given us a whole lot to talk about this year. Best finish the 10th at Vegas. This is one of their older cars. In fact, they finished second here in 2000 with this car. I think this type racetrack has always been a Johnny Benson style type racetrack. Yeah, he runs good on the short tracks. Grew up on the short tracks in ASA. And he's up to six right now. I tell you, Larry, you know, you know this, and Jeff does too. Some driver's car can be handling terrible. You never know. Oh, oh. turn two, Rusty got into the side of Hut Strickland, trying to lap him, and nearly paid the price. Clear, everybody's in line. Clear, uh, clear, That's okay. Uh, That'd like to have been big. He's, he used a good year up on the right front. Whoa, Sterling Marley gets in the back of Johnny Benson. Oh. Ten car, hard in the outside wall. That will be a caution. Coming to the caution. It's the sixth one of the day. Comes out in lap 132. And we see this so much where a car gets that right front into that right rear, and, and you just run out of room getting in the corner. Everybody's hunting the bottom of the racetrack. Well, you got, you, you're moving so right fast. Over here that, you know, you got to turn in. You can't just stay up there out of the way. You got to turn in. And sometimes you come together with the guy that's trying to get under you. A lot of damage to Johnny Benson. Right. Benson goes Benson. right behind the pit wall. Down, and he come right up and hit him. Here's a look. This is coming off. 
Turn four right here down the front stretch. Sterling's got to run. He's got a nose under there. Yeah. Just didn't quite have enough room. And that's one of those things that neither, you don't know. The guy on the, on the leading doesn't know if the guy on the inside is going to go on or if he's going to give him a break. And it's happening so fast. It's such a short distance from off of four to down to turn one. Here's another look. Sterling doesn't doesn't much get under him there. Stay with it. Stay with it. Didn't quite have enough room, but no. he, I, I'm sure he might have thought that Benson was going to give him the room. Can't do that to him. They're all around. See, right there, I think that's what cost Johnny Benson. Yeah. He had to check up. Sterling got the runoff turn four. Yeah. Jeff? On the brakes, on the brakes. Guys, the brakes. you know, sometimes that's where that spotter is so important because if you see that guy move to the inside of you like that, you can at least tell the driver he's looking. He may not be there, but you tell the driver he's looking, and sometimes that'll make a driver either look in his mirror or go in just a teeny bit higher and kind of feel that guy beside him. Steve? Steve? Hey, Jeff, I was just listening to Sterling Marlin on the radio, and he told Lee McCall and Tony Glover, he said, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to get into him, but he just chopped me off. Temperature and tempers, perhaps, here at Bristol. Johnny Benson has climbed from his damaged car.